and all the other relatives. I'm, I'm kind of in a state of shock myself. But we also come today to celebrate and remember, you know, the good times that we had and how Danelle enriched our lives. And, you know, I'm just thinking of like all the people that he brought together. You know, I think like that fourth row there, they all uh, lived with Clara at one time because of, uh, because of Danelle. You know, he brought us together. He helped us, myself included. Uh, he helped us to, to see the joy and the beauty in life. And so there will be a time for people to share. We have a program here. I don't know if anyone's had a chance to see it. But right now, I will uh, ask Pastor Rhoda Klein-Miller to, to come and have the opening prayer. Thank you very much. Just want to recognize that this building, this site that we worship on is the ancestral homeland of the Coast Salish people. And we recognize that we are privileged to have this facility on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tesla-Wetooth nations. And we are very grateful for the stewardship of those who went before us. Let us pray. Creator God, we come here under the shelter of your wings in this sacred space because it is set apart for your children to gather. And we bring to you our broken hearts. We bring to you our grief. We bring to you our anger. We bring to you our disappointment, our shock, and our trauma knowing that if your hands hold up the universe, that you can hold all of these things as well. So we invite your spirit to be among us, your spirit of comfort, your spirit of healing, your spirit of hope. May we leave this place knowing that we have supported and helped each other through this difficult time and that your presence was with us. We pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. So we're going to have some uh, cultural sharing. We'll have a few songs sung. Our first song is going to be a Haida song, followed by the Kwa Kwa Kiwak singers. So if you want to get yourself ready, I'm going to call up... Um, Wad Gada Gang, Presley Portois. I see he got the memo in uh, memory of our brother, Danelle. So I don't really like using microphones. I work in construction. I know you guys know Danelle. He works in construction too. We got quite loud voices. But um, my wife and I were talking about this this morning, and we were, we were concerned how the prayer situation was going to go for for Donnell's family. Uh, traditionally, we would like to harness the Kwakwakilas to, to harness the families, but considering Suzette's family had personally asked me to sing two Haida songs for her family, um, it's a little unorthodox, but because she's personally requested, we were going to do it anyways. Um, brief overview, my name's Wad Gadagal. The clan I come from is the Kukwa Slung Lanas clan from Old Masset. Our family reigns in Yon, which is one of the oldest parts of the Haida Um I've met Donnell when I was really, really young, and, and he's touched so many people. In fact, I, I've heard his voice three days before the accident occurred, and believe it or not, we were comparing Wu Tang songs together. But um, without further ado, I'm going to tell you about the song first before I sing it. The song is called The Spirit Song, and in time of mourning, or in time of passing, the Haida would come together and they'd sing the song to the spirit. What we don't know as colonial, colonial people is that your spirit still is with us. It's still around you. At times, our cultural teachers would tell us song is the only way that we can interpret our emotions to that healing perspective. So what we've done, considering we've learned the colonial English, we've started to take a step back and we're starting to realize how much how important these songs really are for us. Um, my old people used to tell us, and they still do, 
You have to learn your language in order to pass to the next world because you will not learn how to speak to your people. And from my background, from being Haida, this was the only lead that I can get myself into to express myself as well as talk to my creator and spirits that we need to harness. And, and I just wanted to give that expression so that you're aware of the content of the song and why we sing it. Um, and following this song, I'm gonna sing one more song. And traditionally we sing one song from Masset and one song from Skidigit. That way we show the respect from the Haida. Um, I understand the Kwakwakilas are really, really have a strong bond with the Haida people. For thousands of years we've traded. And I felt that it was only right for me to express this. And, and I hope if anybody can sing these songs with us, please help me help his spirit guide back, okay? <clears throat>
song that I sung is called The Feather Song and it's from Skidigit. And the reason why I sung that song is in time of mourning we want to give that spirit the chance to fly back to its ancestors and that's the only right song that I found at this time to give the spirit the chance to go home to where he's from. Um, but other than that I'd like to say thank you for everyone for showing up to show the support to the families. You know this is something that is a very tragic ordeal. But I love the fact that we haven't seen certain faces and certain people, and this gives them a different opportunity to change our relationships with our kinship and our family members to make them better. We hope in the future that we get to sit down with more people as well as our elders to learn more about us instead of about what's out there. Because right now, we are the people that matter. And without having your general support from every person that's in this room, we wouldn't matter. And that's what I'm thankful for, for everybody being here to support this family that's in need. Um, but I'd like to say hello, everybody. And um, thank you. Wad Gadagung. Um, those songs are medicine, you know, in these times of uh, hardship. And we're medicine for each other, so it really means a lot to the family to know how far people have come. And it's a testament to who Donnell was. People wanted to travel to come and to, to be here and to support. You know, it can be hard sometimes for people, but they made the time and the effort to, to come here and be with the family. I was just thinking about Danelle's love for music and songs, and, you know, he introduced me to a lot of different music. And last night, I was sharing stories with my sweetheart about Danelle and playing a lot of the old music that he introduced me to, the Ghetto Boys, the Wu-Tang Clan, uh, Against Me. You know, he made one of the, he was like probably one of the best on the res uh, with his mixtapes. <laughs> he, he had tape over the bottom of the thing so that you can record over tapes that weren't actually, you know, uh, blank tapes to record on. That was a, a new one for me. I didn't know that until he showed me that. And yeah, we just had some, some amazing times thinking about the music and, you know, like how it, you know, inspired him to, to be who he was. You know, I was, I was sharing last night. You know, he always had his, like, uh, his, I think it was like a sonic boom, or I can't remember what it was. It had, like, the extra bass Walkman, and then he had the Discman, and he would always had those headphones on, and then it moved to, like, the little MP3, but he always had those big headphones. You know, music was um, one of the things that you really, you know, helped him to, to get through, you know, various times in his life. I know that, and, and um, I was thinking maybe it would be kind of nice if everybody was to share a song and, you know, we could write it down somewhere and then we could maybe make a, a tape or post it somewhere, you know, in honor of, of him. And there's just so many songs that I could think of. And I was, I, was, I was looking at pictures as well and sharing stories last night. And, you know, maybe in, uh, in a year we can, whoever wants to, in honor of Danelle, we can go for a perm, like that really tight perm. <laughs> He was, he was very happy when, it, I remember seeing it when I was like probably a teenager for the first time and you know every, maybe every five years, you know, he would go for that perm look again. <laughs> yeah, just, just so many good, good times and memories with uh, Danelle. Um, I'm going to call the Kwa Kwa Kiwak singers to come up. My bro, Tlakwa Gila Game, Robert's going to come up and share and if there's any other singers, Cody, I see you, uh, I don't know if. Norman, Daryl, Thomas. I'll hold the mic. <laughs> oh, I see Uncle Uncle Shane's coming up. Excellent. Kesla Asilakwa 
Kele Kesla, Quatsla, Nakwakta, at Lidlo Lach, a Yuam Niska at Luchida, Cria at Lumeti, Walla Samula Noka, Kanskakens, Gilka Pusla, a Silaquo, a Kono Eda Kola, Slakolacte, a Kono Mosi Dalla, a Lamakus Bogiacano, Danel, Hayus Lala Oma. Alamakus Kasalaka Kaya Sesus Hahi Kwile Nukwins, Hakela Kaslaki. I just wanted to speak a bit of our language for our family and our loved ones here, um, and to let each and every one of know how thankful we are to see so much love here in the room, to know how much love Danelle put out into this world, to see it come back for our family at this time. Uh, our wishes is for Danelle not to look to his left, not to look back, and that his uh, work is finished here. He has blessed us with three beautiful children, and that he is uh, on his way into the spirit world and is no longer with us. And we are grateful here to help send him away in a good way.
want to say to the young man's mother. My heart goes out to you. I don't know your grief or your sorrow. I still have my children. I don't know. I do want you to know that my family, in my way back history, come from Kwakwakiwak people as well through the West Coast, my mom's people. I want you to know that my nephew Rupert texted me and said, my brother's gone. I'm hurt, uncle, my brother's gone. And I felt so sad for my nephew Rupert. I may have met your son, may have called him nephew, but I feel as an uncle the loss big loss, vibrant loss. But I want to reassure you, Auntie, he's now spirit. He's going to help all of us who are here when we call on him from the spirit world to come sa'ast, sa'ast shkwalawin, to lift up our hearts and our minds when we need. When I listen to Rupert say how much your son loved music. One of the great songs that came to me from the great rock and roll elders, You Too, is a song called Love Rescue Me. So when Rupert puts that network together of songs, I'm going to send that to him because I'm going to remember your boy. And when I need to be rescued, I'm going to call him. Help me, please, and he's going to come. I want to thank all of you for being here in our language. Ha ha, sacred. Ha ha, slachen, sacred medicine. All of you who are here today, you are sacred medicine for this mother. You're her medicine. When she leaves here, she may not directly see you, but you're going to be in her memory for the rest of her life as medicine that came to her to give her the strength she needs to keep moving through this grief and huge sorrow. So I want to say thank you to you all. Please, as you leave here, travel safe. Say good words for the young man who's gone. And I want to remind you in closing, don't ever think of him in the past tense. He always is. He's gone home, but he's always with us. So when you speak about him, don't talk about, oh, when, when, when. Always remember, him in the present tense. He's always with us. Gila Kusla. Uh, before we uh, sing one more song, I want to call up uh, Upma Gilis, uh, Joseph Rufus. He has, uh, made a, wants to do a, a presentation for the family. He's made something. Kayla Kessler. New Guam, Magilis, Gat Inflin, Lach, Namgins, Lach, Hilis, Lach, Quick Research, Lach, Tower, Dinu. Hi, my name is Joseph, and I am these young men's uncle, and I'd like to do a presentation. This is something that I did for them in memorial and for their father. This is uh, <laughs> very significant to how I feel about this next journey that's going on. And for our brother Danelle, their father, and 
he's the one spearheading them in this dorsal fin. That's him guiding each and every one of his children, which are these three eyes that are here, as well as their mother and their father who are incorporated in this killer whale. And this is just something that I'd like to bring forward to my sister Sarah and more of a memorial for Danelle for the boys so that they'll always remember who they are and where they come from, what families they come from. Our family is a very big family. We come from nobility. These boys are our princes to our family as well as your family. Like we're all we all belong to the same cloth at one point, right? So but yeah, this is just something I'd like to present to my sister and the boys. And just like to say thank you, Kayla Kessla, for each and every one of you who came here to support the family, our family, and you know, to be here as one. And it feels good to see the presence of the people that are here. Just like to say thank you. I'm just gonna give this to my sister. I'll be right back up. I also just want to acknowledge our, our hereditary chief here, our uncle, 
Robert Mountain, Kigley Kesleki. Um, we were taught by Giokamaya, Quin Quin Kui Getsi, Warkis, that, that uh, song, uh, when we sing it at the funeral times, uh, it tell, te tells us the uh, ancestral story of when the Thunderbird comes to take our loved ones home. And so that last song belongs to uh, Bobby Joe, and it sings about the Thunderbird. And the first song was uh, composed by uh, our late uncle Frank Nelson for Kevin Wasden when he passed away. And so from when I was a young boy growing up, we used to hear those songs from Uncle Frank Nelson and Bobby Joe, and we wanted to continue to uh, share those uplifting songs with our family today. And thank our brother Roop for emceeing today. Yeah, I just want to um, reiterate some of the words uh, a couple years ago. I lost my father, and then three months after, my grandmother and my, my uncle Shane shared some words with me, and and it you know it helps me to remember that you know there is no past tense, just a new way of communicating with our with our loved one. You know, he's he's an ancestor now. You know, called upon and to be called upon and seen as a source of strength. And I just want to um, share with his boys, Dylan, Danelle, Derek. Um, I know his life was, you know, for you boys. And, you know, he wanted to, you know, always try and provide for you the best he can. And I remember when Dylan was quite young, I don't, I don't think uh, Danelle would remember. <laughs> but... Um, Watching them game out, I know that was something that they really enjoyed to do. Myself, I stopped playing. I couldn't pick, pick it up after Nintendo. So trying to play games with Danelle, I couldn't do it. But Dylan and Danelle, they were just, they would just game hard. And I was, didn't know, but it was just really beautiful to see the bond and, you know, to see those things that, you know, that they had in common and, you know, that they're able to share those, those times together. And, you know, I just want to say... I will do my best to be there for you and your other uncles in the back there. You have a lot of uncles that are here that want to support you boys and they love you boys and they loved your father and they love you the same. So I just want you to, want you to know that. Um, now I'm going to call up uh, Norman Charlie to do the eulogy. I told him uh, just before we came up, I said, Norm, I hope you had something prepared. They said that you had written something. I don't know what you're talking about. He started to sweat a little bit. He's like, I'm supposed to read what's in here. No, 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 that's just an introduction. Do you have to have your own thing prepared? <laughs> but uh, here we go. Kayla Kesla, Nugo Um, Namaguis, Glu, Guagua, Dakala, Gayu, Klinlacha, Guasala, Nakwakdo. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Norman Charlie. I'm one of Danelle's bros. Um, I've been asked to, to come up and, and read his eulogy, and this is a, a very difficult time right now for the family. Um, uh, it, it wouldn't be right if I didn't call, ask all of my brothers to come up here with me and stand together and um, support one another here and, and uh, so I'd like to call Darcy, Rupert, Thomas, Abe, Brian, all the Dzokwadi posse come up. So basically, if you've served time, come up. No, I'm just <laughs> Chico, Chico. Before I read the eulogy, I just want to, I just want to share a story, the story of how Danelle, uh, how I met Danelle and Darcy. Um, so 
It was 1980 something back in Zokwari. Uh, these two, two city boys moved to our reserve. It was my reserve at the time because I was there first. I had no idea who these boys were. And uh, I can't remember what was going on, but I was flirting with a girl and they were laughing at me because my hair was not nice and I don't know what. So anyway, I picked a fight with both of them and uh, started fighting Darcy. We must have been nine or 10 years old. Fighting Darcy all the way up the hill. Danelle jumped in, so I started fighting Danelle. And the fight went on for a, for a while. Um, the res dogs were watching us, but they got bored and took off. So we continued fighting. But anyway, I remember Darcy, to stop all of it, he goes, you guys, what are we doing? Why are we fighting? We're cousins. And we all looked at each other and were like, oh yeah, we're cousins. <laughs> And we were best friends. Uh, we've been best friends ever since. Uh, we, were, we were inseparable, and we slowly, our posse grew. Uh, we're, we all became friends in high school, and not just friends, we became brothers. At one point of our lives, we all lived with Auntie Clara. Even if we weren't um, permitted to, we, we, we still went there. We ate, we ate, all, <laughs> we ate all her food, and... Uh, you know, I could tell she was getting sick of us, but she loved us like we were her own. Um, you know, we have a, a, a lot of good memories with the Wu Banger, and um, yeah, so. Is Trevor here too? Come on. Danelle Auger, born in Nanaimo, B.C., April 20th, 1979, to Clara Rashatwakis, Kwakwakiwak and Coast Salish, and late Larry Auger, Nishka, and Cree Miti. Danelle has a sister, Suzette Amaya, married to Stanley Amaya, nephews Julian, Josiah, and niece Sierra, and a brother, Darcy Auger, married to Jolene Mountain, nephews Devon and Isaac, and niece Aaron, and brothers Nicholas Dion. Donnell's pride was his, son, his sons, Dylan, 14, Donnell Jr., 11, and Derek, 6, whom he had with Sarah, Sarah Lynn Mountain. Working for Carsan Landscaping, Donnell had learned to landscape from the early age of 14 years, along with his brother, Darcy, who also worked at New Green. Donnell had many brothers and a nickname, Wu or Wu Banger, also the nickname of his uncle, Wally, uh, Walter Wakas, a.k.a. Wally. Donnell's early years were being raised in the Raymer projects while taking the bus with his siblings to Burnaby to attend private school at Deer Lake SDA School. With a love of music, football, and soccer, Donnell rose to popularity with his wit, humor, and easygoing nature. After years spent hanging out at Raycam and living in East Van, the family moved to Port Hardy to be in their community of the Guatsala Nahuatl Nation on Tsulkwadi Reserve. Danelle and Darcy had many friends to call brothers and sisters and enjoyed the great outdoors, soccer, and floor hockey. With a, with a childhood and teen life in Port Hardy, the family moved back to Vancouver where he attended Britannia Secondary and quickly found his place among new friends and more to call fans. His life was full of adventure, laughs, and love. He loved Dragon Ball Z, Rick and Morty, music like Wu-Tang and Tool, buying hats, playing online Scrabble with his mom and sister, and taking his sons out in nature and watching na nature documentaries. He enjoyed, most of all, he enjoyed most of all fun times with his friends. A single father, Donnell had love and pride. His joy was being around his boys. His life was simple. Work, the boys, his mom, his family, Chismo, Megan, and Facebooking, all his many friends. We will miss him dearly and remember the joy he brought to our lives and the many stories of his adventurous life. Um, 
personally, um, I've been doing a lot of reminiscing and, and um, it, I, I'm still at a loss for words um, about 10 years ago I, I was at a really dark time in my life um, heavily into drugs not a care in the world and um, I was very close to leaving this world and I was rock rock bottom and Danelle called me <clears throat> and he said, come live with me in Vancouver. Him and Sarah took me in, let me live with them and their, their young son Dylan at the time. Danelle got me a job. Um, just did what a true friend would do. I, I probably wouldn't be here today if it weren't for this man. So my best friend, my brother, and I'm really gonna miss him, Gaila Kessler. Uh, thanks for sharing those words on the eulogy, Norman. And you can see uh, there's a brotherhood that has come um, with Danelle, his brother Darcy, and uh, you know, it continues to grow. And you know, his, he, he lives on with us. And as we share and, you know, talk about the stories and, you know, I was thinking about uh, stories that I can share, some of the misadventures that we had. <laughs> you know, we had a lot of uh, good times together and, and uh, I can, I can uh, relate to what Norman said because um, Sarah and Danelle took me in as well at one time, you know, they, 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 Danelle learned that from his mom, and I can see that, and he lived that out. And, you know, I know that'll, that'll be something that uh, his boys will, you know, I know they'll, they'll be able to continue with that. You know, he's a very loving, beautiful man. And I was just thinking about uh, elementary school when I was, uh, I think I was about the same grade as Darcy, and, you know, we're about the same age. And we're running around the school, and and uh, Danelle's a few years older than us, and and his friend Dennis was also a few years older than us. So Darcy and I would uh, throw rocks and throw sticks at them, and they would chase us around the school, and and then they caught one of us, and they kind of made us do the splits. I'm like, why didn't you help? <laughs> He's like, I didn't want them to do that to me too. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so right now, we're going to call up um, Danny and Lizzie and Sierra to, uh, to share a song. Thank you, Rupert. Hello, my name is Lizzie Nelson. Um, I'm here today with my twin sister, Danny Nelson, and Sierra Amaya. Um, Suzette and Stanley are very good friends of ours. They're like brother, sister, family, really. Um, they asked us to sing tonight for Danelle a song that I wrote called Dancing in the Sky. When I wrote Dancing in the Sky, I was grieving the loss of loved ones and I wanted to give myself comfort as long or as well as the family and friends and that's what I hope to do today with my song um, and that's Suzette's wishes as well. I hope that everybody here, all the family and loved ones find some sort of peace or comfort through the words of this song. Uh, if you do know the words of the song, pl please feel free to sing along with us for Danelle. And we get to sing with Sierra today, which is awesome. All right. <laughs> Shine bright. 
Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? for being here. Thank you. Oh, what a beautiful song. There's a mic drop at the end. <laughs> I was just sitting there thinking about Danelle and Just thinking about his laugh, his his giggle that he liked to do. <laughs> you just picture him, you know, looking down at us, kind of giggling away, and you know, um, yeah. It's I'm surprised I was able to go this long without, you know, crying beforehand. <laughs> but it's definitely been a lot of tears leading up to this this day today. And uh, the next person I'm going to call up for some words of encouragement is Rhonda Klein Miller. And then we'll have uh, open sharing for people who want to maybe share something or memory or whatever's in your heart. So I didn't know Donnell, but I know Suzette and his mother Clara quite well. This is their home church. Um, when the children would attend Deer Lake School, they would also attend this very facility. So this is the walls, the floors here um, carry the memories of those kids running about. And Clara asked me to share some words of comfort, words from scripture that she finds brings her hope and peace and meaning for this tragic event. One of the Psalms that I want to share with you is Psalm 34, verse 18. It says, the Lord, the eternal one, is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those crushed in spirit. And you might ask, how can the supernatural, how can the divine, a being that dwells in the heavenly places, be close to us who are brokenhearted and crushed in spirit? How could a God possibly know the pain that I'm going through today? Well, we believe that that very God, the creator God, chose to become his own creation so that he could legitimately, credibly say, I have walked in your feet. I have been confined to this flesh and I do know exactly what it feels like to be human, to lose, to suffer, and to grieve. The passage that I want to share from Jesus' own life comes from John 11. It's the story of Jesus' close friend, a man named Lazarus. And word came through his sisters to Jesus, who was a day's journey away, that he was dying. But Jesus didn't go. Jesus wasn't right there with his close friend as he grew sicker and sicker to the point of death. It was two days later when Jesus turned to his friend, the other disciples, and just made this announcement. We find it in John 11:11. 11, 11. He turned to them saying, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I'm going to go wake him. His disciples were confused and they replied, Lord, if he sleeps, then he's going to get better. <laughs> they thought he was sleeping it off. However, Jesus was speaking about his death, but they thought he was just simply taking a rest. So Jesus said to them very plainly, straight up, Lazarus is now dead. And I am glad 
because for your sakes it was that I was not there. This is so that you might believe. And so now we'll go to him. Verse 21 talks about how Martha, the sister, responds when Jesus arrives. She sees Jesus and with confusion and with pain and frustration, she says to him, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus comforts her with these words, your brother will rise again. Martha thought she knew what he was talking about and said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the final day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he dies, will live. Jesus then asked, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. And this is the shortest verse that we have in our Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus shared in that grief. He also had lost a brother and a best friend. And in that moment, his heart was broken. As they approached the tomb, it says, Jesus came groaning within himself. It was a cave and a stone had been placed across the entrance. And Jesus told those people, take away the stone. Take away the stone. And praying to the Father, God, creator, he said, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know you always hear me. But because of the people standing as witnesses, I say this, that they may believe you sent me. And he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Clara believes that Donnell's spirit is sleeping. But as a mother who trained up her child, her children, in the way they should go, she trusts the promise that even though they grew apart, away, had a roller coaster of a journey, a crazy life, the promises for the parents that train up their children in the way they should go, later in life they will not depart from it. They will hang on to that knowledge that the creator God is their best friend, is their savior, is the resurrection and the life. And so we wait with the family. We keep his memory alive. We hold space, but we comfort each other knowing that Jesus is going to call out, Donnell, come forward. And they will embrace again. They will hug again. They will share laughter and tears together in the earth made new. And this is the promise I leave with you today. Thank you for those words of comfort for the family. Uh, I'm just thinking about calling out and uh, I'd like to give a shout out uh, to the Woo Banger, AKA Woo. So um, if you can help me out on the count of three, I'm gonna get everyone to go Woo! All right, see if we can do that for our, for our brother. One, two, three. Woo! Yes, we do. One more time. One, two, three. Woo! So now uh, we're going to have the mic open for people who want to share some words. Um, don't be shy or else I'll, I'll start, you know, if I see anyone making eye contact, I'm going to call you up. Just 
Hello, everybody. I'm here to stand uh, with a heavy heart to come here and support Clara and her family, Sarah and the boys. It was a very tough time for everyone. For me, I'd just like to say, Sarah and the boys will have a lot of help. I'm Sarah's dad, by the way. And this is Sarah's dad, too. Sarah's got two dads, so she's got a big family. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is my son, Robert. He's my Amata. He needs to be here to learn to speak in front of everybody. I'd just like uh, Robert to speak some Nkwakula first, is our, our tradition when the chiefs and heads of the family get up before uh, anything else starts, that he, he'll explain everything that's going on. Just explain. Tila Kesla, Gikmaina Coppens, Talis, Gakin, Dagilis Lakan, Slakoyasins, a Gayut Laka, Mamalelekla, Gayut Lakazawa, Dainuk, Glid Rola Laka, Nakwakta, Dluqua Sala, Shilako, Dlu Claire, Wallace Mutla Nokaya, Olek Gala, Josus Nokaya, Kus Gikamaya, Kunskakins, Tlawe Gilisakins, a Slakolakte. Gaelic has lacked a silaco and cooked to Waslam, Ayum. Just wanted to uh, formally introduce our hereditary chief, Robert Mountain, and his expressions to ask me to share some of the family relations in our language to the Guasla, the Nakwakta of London Harbor, and that his mother comes from the Hachwatmis, the Quick Sudanuk, the Zawadinuk, who are one family, as well as the through the mountains and the Mamalidikla and the Nakwakta. Uh, in that he's come to share uh, his strength and to acknowledge and honor the ancestors of Danel and that we're one people when we go further back and even further back we we are really one people and so our chief here wanted to express his uh, gratitude and love for the families that have gathered together for our family and uh, just hold his uh, respect and introduce his family members as well. Uh, um, just to continue on, you know, we're always put in a position uh, to be humble and to acknowledge everybody um, that's in our family. We're all family no matter what happens. If there's a breakup, an argument, everything else, we're still family. That's our way. We don't pick and choose who your family is. I broke up with Robert and Mom. 20 years ago, we're still friends, but all Robert's aunts and uncles still call me brother. All Robert's cousins, my nieces and nephews still call me uncle, even though I haven't been with their mom for over 20 years. We're still family no matter what happens to two people. We're family till the end, no matter what. I'd like to say that the reason why I'm here is for my nephews. I feel their pain. In our language, our kids are our gwalayu. They're our reason for living. They are so special. We do everything for our kids, grandkids, and great grandkids. It's never about us, it's about our kids. We do everything to make them happy and do what's best for them. All our family, and I forgot to introduce my nephew Joseph here, he's related on the Rufus side, related to Jolene and Caroline and Sarah Lynn. I, I just like to express the gratitude to see everybody here showing their respect to Clara and the family, and Darcy, and Jolene, and Sarah, 
and everybody. In our language, respect, we say mayakla, but mayakla is way more than respect. It's compassion, it's empathy, it's feeling sorry, compassion, and never ever have a negative feeling about another person. Never. Never call anybody down, never judge anybody, never ever think you're better than anybody. Shove the ego out the door. That's what Mayakla means. We all have to have that respect for everybody, no matter what happens. Not just in here, but everyday life. I'm here to express my sincere, heartfelt condolences to the family. When my daughter, she let me know I was, I was on a highway and I almost crashed. I just pulled over and cried for 20 minutes. I couldn't believe it either. It was, it was really heart-wrenching, Claire, to hear that one of my sons passed away. And Darcy, I really, really, I really feel for you. I had a brother as well. Same thing happened. My brother got hit and run. Same thing happened to him. I don't know what's wrong with these drivers. Hit somebody and take off. That is uncalled for, heartless. They're still looking for that person who, who killed my son, Robert's brother. He's gonna be missed. We're here to celebrate his life. I had a talk with my son earlier. Donnell's not gone. Donnell is here with each and every one of you. You all ho hold a piece of him in your heart. He's still there, he'll always be there. He'll never be forgotten. And I told Robert, you've got an angel up there. No? Pray to Donnell, because Robert said he run to the brother so bad, he called Donnell a brother. And Robert, he really loved Donnell as a brother. And I'm just glad I made it down here from Alert Bay last night. I, I had to be here with family, and Clara, and Darcy, Jolene, Sarah, the boys especially. Love you kids. I'll always be there for you. Gaelic is the... Um, on behalf of the Moon family, we originally come from Hakem's in London Harbor. We, we are related to the Walkers family on my mom's side. But I'm also the head of our family. I come from Wakeman Sound, Jack James, Chief Jack James. I now hold that seat. On behalf of both our families, we want to send our condolences to Claire. I want to share with the boys that, um, I don't know if a lot of you know this, but I have taken the boys with me on tribal journeys the last few years. And um, I came, I came for a funeral here last year. Claire and Donnell, and Donnell, little Donnell. They started driving me out and then Donnell wanted to get out and bus home or something like that. But before that, he thanked me for doing what I did with the children because they were learning not only our culture when we did our protocol, but they were learning other cultures. They were learning that there were an understanding there were m more friends out there who didn't drink and do drugs. And that was the biggest compliment I got all year and I keep thinking about it because that was his wish for the boys was for us to bring them up. And, and uh, I don't know, 
I'm, I'm numb right now. I don't know how to hold my daughter and say sorry. She had, we, like Robert said, we share three, three beautiful grandsons. Now, the way our culture goes, it, we, we have to share him. We have to start helping you guys look after him. And I'm really hoping, and I, and I know that I'm gonna try my best to be there, to help you guys out whenever you can. And I thank, thank God because he gave up three weeks out of the summer to let the boys come with me. That was his time with the boys during the summer. That was his time, but he let them come with me. And I'll be forever grateful for that, forever. And I want to say thank you. And, and our hearts are with you guys at this time. Thank you, thank you everybody, for coming here to... to Share, share your love and your hugs with the family. Thank you, Tesla. Sorry to cry. Just say goodbye, my brother. I was lucky enough to come down and live with Sarah and Tano when I was like, 12, 13 years old, and ever since Tim Howe's been a role model to me, good and bad. <laughs> but I just want to say that I loved him, considered him my brother, still do. Always will. Uh, we've had a few fights. There's no bad blood. We loved each other. Always just hug each other whenever you see each other. I just can't believe that this happened. I feel for you guys. Thank you. Do it. 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 But I've been messaged again quite a few from some family members from home that belong to the Rufus and Martin family. Um, they just wanted to send their condolences and their love and, you know, they're praying for each and every one of you, Clara, Suzette, you know, Darcy, all the kids, you know, the nephews and the children. They just wanted to, from our family, we'd like to extend our love and gratitude to you guys. So. Um, yeah, it's a, definitely a tough time. It's, it's a challenge to that. We're all going to have to get through at some point together, or if not, like, do our best to be, be together. He has three beautiful children here, you know, three beautiful men. You know, we need to be there for them. We need to put things aside and make sure that their well-being is, you know, taken care of. and. You know, we'll all have to band together and like really raise these children as our own and, you know, do what our, our people do. We take care of the, you know, the family after someone has left us. So, yeah, I'm just very grateful and very honored to be able to stand here for my family. And, you know, just like to, again, send our condolences out to the family. You know, it's, it's a hard loss, losing the son, father, brother, friend, however they, you want to put it. But yeah, I'd just like to extend my condolences to each and every one of you, and thank you guys for being here. Yeah, there was that, that laugh that I was trying to, to emulate with Danelle. <laughs> Robert knows it well. 
and I can relate. Danelle's been a very big influence on my in my life. Some some good and some bad. <laughs> Um, I was just thinking of like uh, some of the stories that I could think of, and you know, uh, Janelle was definitely a, a joke joker, uh, always kind of laughing, kind of playing pranks, and I'm kind of in this group text with uh, some of my friends back home, my brothers back home, and and you know, driving from Port Hardy to South can be a long time, you know, and there's no bathroom sometimes, so you have to maybe pull over, and uh, so one of our bros was taking a pee and his pants were all the way down to his ankles and when I seen that picture I was like that's Danelle's move <laughs> I remember going to uh, use the bathroom uh, we're out at like a pub and uh, I'm standing there and he's next to me and I look over and he's got his pants down to his ankles peeing in the urinal <laughs> oh well, that guy um, so I see some I see some people wanting to uh, come up and share. I'm gonna call Abe and Emma to to come up and share some words or whatever's in their heart. Um, well, I'd like to go my brothers up here. Darcy. Everybody. Uh, so I'm very glad. Oh, over could have do our brother John. Stand. <laughs> well, all the brothers up here, like, all of us. Uh, I question myself of which, how I would sing this song and and who I would sing it to. And I think right now, that's it for Claire. Doors open. He says I've been waiting for you. They still back out. The doors closing as the storm to fire his tears. Oh yes, the storm to fire his tears. Angels kill the miles and evening. I said, Angels kill the miles in the night. She sits down right beside her. And she says, Forget about the wrongs and rights. Forget the wrongs and the rights. Sometimes we walk hand in hand. And sometimes we walk it alone. But it tells me a best for chosen. And then it is written in stone. And that it is written in stone. Angels came to my house in the evening. I said, Angels came to my house in the night. She sits down right beside her. And she says, Forget about wrongs and rights. Forget the wrong and the rights. 
Sometimes we walk heavy And sometimes we walk it alone But it doesn't mean the past we chose That it is written in stone That it is written in stone Angels kill the mouse in the evening. I said, Angels kill the mouse in the night. She says, Tell me, sad. And she says, Please don't give up the fight. Please don't give up the fight. A chapter in his life has come to pass. He recognizes things are going to change. Angels, oh yes, that even. So I guess it's time to turn the page. Oh yes, it's time to turn the page. Bella Kessa, a new um, plate on these. I'm a Kalasu in Ukwaka. Um, this is my big brother here. Uh, I just want to say I love you guys. Jolie. Um, everybody, like, it's really hard for me to talk right now <laughs> after that song. Abe's really good at making me cry. <laughs> I was just looking at my man hands <laughs> while he was singing it. <laughs> That was one of the nicknames that Darcy and Donnell gave me. I don't know why, but anyways. Uh, contour landscaping. <laughs> Cantor, contour landscaping was one of the uh, better jobs that I had here, and I loved it. And um, I wanted to be on the, the hardworking crew instead of the slacker crew. Uh, so I think his name was Scotty. He said, I don't know if she can do this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> So then I had like a test day and I think um, I did really good and I think Darcy and I used to um, race. <laughs> if there's like these lifts and we go up with a mower or what do you call this thing? The blower and the weed whacker and we used to um, have races and see if we could meet each other at the top. And I think I was always just like this much behind him. But anyways, I think they called me man hands because my hands were always dirty. <laughs> Because I didn't like wearing gloves and I used to have like lots of calluses and stuff like that. <laughs> and <laughs> I think my hands are a lot manlier than my brother around those days, so <laughs> he calls me his brother. <laughs> um, I spent lot, many years with Danelle and Darcy and, and Clara and Suzette and Stanley and um, I'm thankful for these those years and I thank you guys for taking me in and you know taking care of me um, And I'm gonna miss it out a lot. I know I wasn't close in the end, but honestly sometimes I did get funny phone calls from him <laughs> And I didn't know whose number it was I was <laughs> I thought it was like Kareen or Sam or somebody like that. And then I'd answer and he'd be like, hello, man hands. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Danelle. <laughs> or some other time, like I won't say the other things he would say, but um, the last, about a month ago, he called me and he said that him and Chico were going to come and uh, pay a visit to everybody in Port Hardy. And, yeah. Anyways, um, uh, I love you all. Thanks for those words, Emma and Abe. I know you're sharing from what's in their heart. I also want to let you know that the song that Abe sang is a song that he wrote himself. He didn't share that, and just wanted to let you know that. Uh, I think our Thomas wanted to share some words as well. Hello. Um... Growing up with Danelle, we uh, we did everything together. 
the good, the bad, the ugly. It's... Back in 2013, I was fighting for my life. I was on life support in Nanaimo. I was, uh, I was uh, heavily sedated and when I came out of it, I had to ask my mom, did um, my brother Danelle come visit me? She looked at me and she was like surprised because because all I could remember him was him talking to me and crying. And she was like, just pretty surprised that I could remember that. And then back in 2015, my goal was to reunite the boys. Um, when I got married, and my dream came true. All the boys were there. You just, you never know. Now most of us are here. I just want to share a couple, a couple of stories of growing up with Danelle. We were uh, in high school and we were trying to find things to do, killing time, being bad, I guess. We were uh, in the gym and uh, there's um, some gymnastic r rings that were attached to the wall. And uh, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was attached to the ceiling. We, we brought it down. Danelle got on there. We had to pull the chain up and we brought him right to the ceiling. And then you can see Danelle using foul language, of course. And he's like, don't do it, don't do it. And what do we do? We let him go. <laughs> he, he hurt. Uh, probably tw he twisted both his ankles and he hurt his mungus. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, just trying to remember other ones. <laughs> but there's, I'm going to cherish every memory I had with Danelle. Uh, thank you, Clara, for sharing your boy with us. Uh, I'll forever be grateful. Your 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> but I love you all. Thank you for that. Um, as you can see, there's been a lot of people that have been taken in by Clara, Sarah, and Danelle. I just want to see a show of hands if you're one of the people that has uh, stayed with them at one point in your life or another. Whoa, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it's a testament to, to who they are and the generosity and, you know, how much they believe in, in family and, you know, supporting one another. And I want to ask if there's anyone else that would like to share some words. Um, no. One, two, I see two people who go Daryl and then uh, Presley. <clears throat> Thank you, Rupert. I, I, I feel like I need to come up and just share some of the, some of the stuff I recollect with uh, Darnell. I, uh, so you can hear throughout the night, throughout the day, is uh, nothing but laughter and, and stories about Danelle with these uh, group of guys behind me. I'm, I'm considerably a little bit older than them, but I, was, I, I had the, the, quite the, uh, what do you call it, the ride with them throughout the years. Um, and especially with Danelle, you know, just, like Thomas just mentioned a couple of minutes ago about the, the, the wedding that Thomas had and uh, being able to sit around these guys with Danelle is just something else that I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't imagine, you know, their younger years hanging out and doing bad things, right? And there's so many stories that I've been able to sit down and listen over the years with these guys behind me and Danelle and Dar Darcy 
And it just really speaks of um, Donnell's character, how he was able to, you know, pull the guys together and keep them together with, with his humor, his character. You know, his laughter is, you know, is, is nothing but, you know, I think tremendous, you know, to have amongst, you know, these guys behind me, you know, with Darnell's, um, his, uh, his friendship, his brotherhood that he felt genuine with, with amongst these, uh, I want to say fine young men, but uh, it's pretty bad if I said that. <laughs> but it's, it's just amazing. You know, I was able to sit there for a couple hours, watch these young men, um, just nothing but laughter and Darnell. He always just caved into their funny antics that they wanted to do, and one of them was with with Abe that that day. You know, Abe wanted to lift him up and do a like like dirty dancing. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> a, a scene from Dirty Dancing, and we're all sitting there, and then nobody wanted to get up, but Abe wanted to you know lift somebody up above his head and twirl around, and <laughs> nobody wanted to get up, and everybody just right away just looked at Darnell. <laughs> Darnell, get up there. And Darnell took a few minutes and he finally put down his can and, and some expletives I won't say in here. And he finally got up and he did it. And, you know, I had that, I had that video on my uh, laptop at home and I was trying to um, send it to my, my phone so I can send it to the boys on that day. Uh, Darnell was able to, you know, just like I said, make everybody laugh in that room that day. That's all I can think about is his humor and his his... What do you call it? Even back home, when he moved back home for a bit there with Clara and the, and the family, I was able to have a chance to coach them, all these young men, and, and Donnell and Darcy, uh, Dusty, Dawson. Um, unfortunately, he's not, wasn't able to be with us today. He wishes he was here. He really does. Clara, Suzette, Darcy, our brother uh, Dusty. I was able to coach them in soccer for, for one year. And it was, um, it was actually a team just from um, Tsolgori that year. And I had the opportunity and it was, you know, it's, it was something that I would hold, uh, hold dearly for me for the rest of my life, been able to coach all these guys, Darcy, Darnell. I have a picture in my home, but I, I, I can't find it. But it, that what goes, brings back that is um, Norman was our star player. Uh, back then we were just, they were like, I don't know, 12 and under, 11 and under, or something like that. Just a young team. And uh, of course, we were getting beat every game, but we still go, came out and played. Even going to Alert Bay and playing a, playing a game one day, and our, our van broke down. You know, we we're stuck over there for a few hours, but just like I said, just being able to be around these, these guys and, and Darnell and whatnot is just something that I hold dearly. And uh, yeah, we were losing all, all losing all our games all year, and then we somehow managed to start winning the last few games of the year, and we made it into the playoffs. And I think it was the semifinals. Um, Norman got hurt from um, of all people, a young girl just took him right out. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, he was just like, and then everybody was just crushed. Like, no, we, we're not going to do it. We're not going to win. I said, well, Norman's just one player, and there's 10 other, 14 other years that are here can play. But yeah, they were just crushed that you know, Norman got hurt, and they thought there's, there, it was done. But you know, it was just one of those things that I was, like I said, I was able to. I had asked Thomas about that, uh, coaching the soccer part with Darcy and Darnell, and Thomas, like even Thomas was playing at that time. Uh, yeah, just like I said, just his humor, his laughter, and is able to, you know, really keep the guys together when he was in a room full of um, friends and family. His his humor and, and his uh, tenacious um, friendship and brotherhood that, you know, he, he, he expelled to everybody around him, that something to be uh, dearly missed. You know, it was, you know, Suzette, uh, Claire, Darcy, and the rest of the family, you know, I, I'm really, really am happy to be here today, you know, like, like I said, it's not it's not the end. It's, you know, it's, um, he's he's here with us. He's laughing. You know, he's crying with us. He'll always be with us. Gala Kessler. Thank you, Daryl. I think Presley, I seen you wanting to share some words. 
just thinking about the uh, the kind of like jokester prankster that Danelle was, uh, reminded of a, of another time when or maybe about 16. So there was like our crew, and then there was like Daryl's crew that are you know a few years older than us, and so uh, the two others, uh, Wade, Charlie, and Ken Zapp. They, uh, they're living together, and I guess they might have been having like a party or something, and Danelle goes into the freezer. He grabs the ice cube tray. He pees in it, and then he puts it back into the freezer. <laughs> and those guys went and like, they took those ice cubes and they used them for their drinks. They got beat up for it, but uh, oh man, those are just the, the kind of antics, you know, crazy stuff that, that we used to get up to, and you know, Danelle was often leading the way in that, so. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> I can I can definitely see the laughter and the joy that Danell and uh, his great family has given everybody. Um, I'm going to share a couple of small, quick stories because I know a lot of people are a little antsy, sitting down on the chairs for a little bit. And I know everybody needs to get some water and some food to sustain themselves. But uh, my wife and I were talking about this yesterday, and it was really funny. Like. Everybody knows Donnell's laugh, and you can hear it from the other side of the room. And this story still comes back to me. This is when I was heavily induced, drinking more. Um, we kind of slowly drifted away, but I remember one day, my wife and I were going partying. Excuse me, I'm just going to talk loud. And we're going into this pub, and, and I'm looking over, and all I can hear is, eh. <laughs> <laughs> So you're creeping around the corner, and you're like, <laughs> and then just as he sees you, he's like, hey, hey. <laughs> and then your wife looks at you and you're like, oh, shit, shit, look what you did. You just got me in trouble. He's like, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> so he'd look over at me and then he'd give you like that little snicker like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I look at my wife and she's like, no, you're not doing that. So anyways, we, we, I go back to the bar and I'm sitting at the table with my friends and whatevers and I can totally see right behind my head, something's there. And he's going like this. <laughs> and my wife's right here and my wife doesn't do stuff like that. So I'm totally like, something's going on here, man. Something's going on. So I turn around the other way and sure enough, he's like, yeah. <laughs> and the only reason why I wanted to express that story is because I've heard nothing but positive things about this guy. I've never in my entire life known this family, ever heard anything bad about him, his brother, his wives, his girlfriends, his family's wives. <laughs> you know, I've, 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 I've really, I haven't heard nothing ever bad. And I wanted to share that story because that's all I hear in my mind about him is that, yeah, or woo. You knew when he was there because he'd make himself present without knowing how great a person he really is. But that told me as I started growing older and we little drifted away a little bit, but about three days before his passing, he video called me. And exactly like that person said, they randomly call you, randomly call you. And it was video chatted. And on, on Facebook, like we love Wu-Tang, like we're Wu bangers for life. So I'm up with the new era kind of music, right? So I'm shooting music back and we're feeding threads back and forth to each other. And he's like, fuck this, I gotta phone this guy. So he calls me FaceTime and he's like, Russ, that song's garbage. He's like, that's garbage. He even drops the phone, puts it down. I was like, wait, wait, wait. He's like, dude, you cannot ever mess with an old Wu-Tang song, man. It's not the same. Once Old Dirty was done, that's it. And then he kind of walked away. And then I looked at him, I was like, dude, you can hear old Derby's voice in the back. He's like, dude, that's a clip. That does nothing. He's not even alive. I was like, okay, okay, I see I'm not going to win here. I was like, so what are we going to do to make this better? He's like, just play the old stuff, man. Don't play all this new stuff anymore. And ever since that, that last conversation I had with him, uh, it really got me thinking on how important music to us brought all us together, regardless if it was, if it was like, you know, your standard iTunes, Facebook, whatever, even traditional stuff, you know, it really gave us an opportunity to see his real self 
listening to his music, listening to what he really was. And considering the amount of information that I've heard from family members and close brothers, as far as I'm concerned, you guys are brothers. Blood cannot change that. You guys are straight bros. And, and if I had an opportunity like you guys did to have that kinship with a young, young, at a young age, man, I'd be fighting tooth and nail for it. And I, I, there's really nothing I can say that, that can make it any better. Um, I haven't lost important people that close to me in my life. Uh, the only close person that I have had lost in my life was my grandmother, which was from my dad's side. But still to this day, I feel confident and comfortable because I knew at that particular moment, they know us well enough to be confident in ourselves. They know us well enough to stand in front of everybody else with that courageous mentality to say, you know what? Woo, I did it. I did this. And now it took this situation to get all you people in one room. Think about this one more time. How many times has all of us been in the same room together at the same time? This is what love to me really means. You know, I, I see people that travel afar, ethnic distinctions. I love hearing people speak their native tongue, regardless of where they're from. To me, that's true indigenous mentality. That's real. And for, for, for a young man to do that for us, to bring us all together, that's, that's empowerment at its fullest. And, and I don't want to drag it out anymore because I know I'm hungry and I'm, I'm thirsty and I'm hoping the youngsters can help these elders in getting their food and their snacks and whatever else they need. Because you know, that Donnell is going to come up beside you and rub your leg. <laughs> Uh, thank you for those words. And what we're going to do is we're going to call the uh, the Auger family up, maybe share some words, and uh, we have a video to watch. I think after that, and then if you know maybe while we're uh, sharing food together, if you wanted to share something, you know that might be a good time. Uh, so I'll call the the Auger family up right now. Gila Kusla. <laughs> um, I want to call up my aunties and my uncles, the Wakis family, and my nephews, and my sons, Uncle Wu. I want to thank you all so much for being here. This has been really, really hard for our whole family. I love hearing all the memories of, you, of the boys, my brothers, with my brother. Because I do remember when Norman got in a fight with Danelle and Darcy. The shirts were off, and they were totally rolling up the hill. I don't know how that's possible, but um, I'm so happy to see Emma. Emma was like a sister, too. She, she lived with us for a long time. And uh, all these boys, I was the sister. So um, there were a tough couple times I kind of let loose, but I kind of had to be somewhat of a role model, but I, there was lots of time I wasn't either. <laughs> um, but you know, when I think of all the memories, there's just so many because it was our brother. And uh, he was changing. I see a lot of growth in him. And he was taking care of himself and he loved his son so much. And, you know, Danelle and I were really close because we had, we had boundaries. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't like partying with him, and, but when we hung out, we did the nature stuff. We had dinners together. And um, so we had a very different kind of a relationship. And I was sort of on the sidelines watching all the shenanigans. The happiest day was when he went to Port Hardy for Thomas's wedding. He went MIA big time on our family, <laughs> big time, because we couldn't find him. And how can you not find someone in Port Hardy? 
I remember Abe came in and you saw him sing. Well, imagine him with nothing but just his, uh, his vest. <laughs> I never thought I would see a Chippendale live in Tsukwadi. <laughs> and then he said, don't worry, your brother's okay. You know, that's how um, everyone back home took care of my brother. All these guys have lived with us in our home, and our home is, is very, very tight. This is my mom's brothers and sisters here. We're so honored that we have two mountain women who've married into our family, who've made children. We've all our family, you're right, Chief Robert Mountain. You know, it's gonna be hard for us, but we thank you all for your support. A lot of you have given so kindly to the GoFundMe, which we are putting in trust for the children. And this is gonna be a long road. It's gonna be a hard trigger as the media and the case moves forward. But we wanna thank you for your love and all your donations because these children, you know, like soon Dylan will be graduating. These young guys, like my, my brother and I got really close near the end because Derek is the same age as Sierra. So me and Danelle and Sierra and Derek did a lot of things together, just the four of us. And, um, you know, I'm heartbroken because Danelle and Darcy are like twins. They're only a year apart. So they were with each other, like right and left foot. And most importantly, my mom, who's with my brother every day. I wanna thank Megan for being here too. Megan was a big part of his life near the end. She shared so many photos with us, including the one on the program. I never knew my brother to do so many cool things and he got to fulfill all the things he always wanted to do in life with a friend like Megan. So thank you so much for showing him so many cool things. And Chico is, is, new, is my brother now, just more than ever, because him and Chico were brothers, but they had a tighter bond. I wanna thank the company as well. He spent every day at Carson. I don't know if there's any hands who stop um, people here. Thank you, Carson. He spent every day with my brother. He never talked about anything else but landscaping and his sons. And, and we couldn't go through a family dinner without Danelle and Dorsey talking about landscaping. <laughs> oh, this one, that's my brother. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but this is my uncle Gordy. I mean, we kind of get mixed up between Gordy and Darcy. And then there's my uncle Wally, who's like Danelle, so it's kind of funny how that works. <laughs> uh, but um, we want to thank you so much for being here with us and being with our family. We're going to miss them very dearly, and we want you to know that you can always reach out to us and uh, keep his memory alive. Um, because of the injustice of what happened to him. We always want to remember all the good things. So please share your stories. I would love to hear the stories of when he was working with you in the landscaping. I want to hear the stories of even when we're just hanging out and doing whatever. They're all very important to all of us. So thank you so much. My name is Jolene and Darcy's wife. But I was fortunate enough to know, to know through my sister. Two sisters, two brothers. And they also took me in. And him, when he was a young one, Sarah always stole him from me. <laughs> and he was, so he's been a part of my life for a long time. He was a pain in my ass, but I loved him. <laughs> He, he loved my kids. He loved his brother. He called him every day. He always would go and check on Devon. He was, he, Devon's really a hermit and stay in his room and Devon would, or D Danelle would always go and see him. He won, last year I think it was, he came, he came and he had a present for him so he went in there to go bring it to him. And I was like, oh, let me get a picture. And Devon stood up. He's like, no, 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 don't stand up. I don't want to see you taller than me. <laughs> but I was like, no, stand up. I want to get a picture. So I got a picture. And my youngest son, he suffers from anxiety. 
and it didn't stop him from, didn't stop Tanel from being there. He was like, no, nope, I'm his uncle, I'm gonna do it, be there and whatever, and you'd be his usual self, go in there, and hey, Isaac. And Isaac had a really hard time with it, but I was really glad that he did that because it didn't matter what any of us were going through. Her little creative one, I posted pictures of um, bracelets that we made. He came down the next day, he's like, Aaron, give me a bracelet, give me a bracelet. She's like, no. He's like, give me a bracelet, I want one of your bracelets. Wanted a handmade bracelet from Aaron. Wanted... I... It was a big part of my life. It was always there, always around. And I'm gonna miss him so much. I still can't even believe that he's not here. But just wanted to share. So at this time, we're gonna play a video to remember him, and then we'll have a reception downstairs. Thank you so much.
as hard as I can just to make you understand cause the world it won't stop it keeps going going round and round I guess the nature the nature of love Oh, beautiful. 
as you can see, just thinking about uh, the, the slideshow that we just seen, you can see how important family was to Donnell. Family and friends were his life, his boys. And we can come together today to, you know, remember those times that we got to have with them and carry those with us when we leave here, drawn for strength. And on behalf of the family, I would just like to express the heartfelt gratitude for you to come and share in this day as we remember our, our brother, our son, our uncle, our dad. And as we leave here, you know, we carry those things in our hearts so that we can draw upon for strength down the road. And, you know, remember the family as we leave here to, to send them that positive energy, those prayers. It's a, it's a difficult time as he transitions and, you know, we transition to a new type of relationship with, with Danelle. So once again, uh, I would just like to say thank you, and it's been a real honor to come and to be able to help the family in this way. And uh, we're going to have some food and some drinks afterwards downstairs so we can continue to, to visit with one another. And, uh, you know, maybe in smaller groups, we might be able to share some of those stories that we can't say in this setting. So I'm just... <laughs> and, um, yeah, so thanks again, everyone, for coming out today. And we'll uh, continue on downstairs. Aguila Kaslaki.